Black Friday. A very dangerous time for people who make music. The music production industrial complex around this time goes into overdrive and wants to eat your wallet. And it doesn't want to eat your music because it's actually got a good intentions, but unknowingly tends to eat your music as well. So what do I mean by the music production industrial complex? The people who and the companies that make training gear, software and packs, sounds, samples, preset packs are collectively what I call the music production industrial complex. And yes, Make Music Your Life is a part of the music production industrial complex. And actually none of these people that I've ever met or ever seen have anything, I believe, other than your best interests at heart. I'm not saying that anyone's evil here. None of them are specifically just out to get your money. It's not that. But the problem is, because there is this music production industrial complex trying to help you in various different ways, as a creator at the center of it, you can end up not making any music and simply buying more stuff. I'm not saying that you shouldn't ever buy anything. Training, gear, software, and sounds and packs, they are valuable. And I do think that actually learning things and training yourself is going to mean that you make more music, but only if you take a particular approach to the music production industrial complex and all of the things that you could do. Now, a way of thinking about this is that if you are focused on solutions and you don't have any problems to solve, then you are distracting yourself with all of this stuff. There was an ad for something, I can't remember who it was for, some kind of sample pack company or something. And it said, with a million sounds at your fingertips, what will you make today? <laughs> My answer to that question was absolutely nothing. <laughs> Because <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> a million sounds at my fingertips. I've got no idea where to start. So those a million sounds at your fingertips is just a bunch of solutions. Because if you focus on more and more solutions without creating anything, there's no way that you can invest enough time on any one of those things to make any progress. So then you're in this kind of, I'm not making anything. You get option overwhelm. I've got 5,000 different things to do. I could do this, I could do that. And you never ever spend enough time on any of it to make any progress. You get confused and then you think, oh, what will make me feel better? Oh, I, I, I know, this looks like a good thing to buy. So I'll buy that, you know, gear acquisition syndrome. Gas is a real thing. I've actually helped some people who they actually self-identified as having a gear addiction where they would just buy things and then they would sell it and then they would buy more stuff and then they would sell that and they weren't making any music. They were just buying more and more stuff without making any progress. And that's because they were looking at the solutions in the absence of problems. People who have tutorialitis, who just constantly watch tutorials and don't make any music because they think they need to learn this and they need to learn that and they need to learn all of these things before they finish anything is another example of the same problem. You become a consumer and when you think about it, a consumer is almost by definition the opposite. I'm consuming things, they're coming in. Whereas a creator is making things, it's going out. So at any point in your music making journey, if you notice yourself just consuming things and you haven't created anything for a while, you need to shift. You need to first, number one, start creating things. I mean, when I say creating things, specifically actually finishing music, going through the process of finishing music, the whole process. Because when you finish music, what happens is you then have problems to solve. If you're not finishing music, you don't have any problems other than I'm not doing anything. So you're just constantly adding solutions to this non-existent problem. But when you're actually finishing music, you have these obstacles, you have these problems that you're facing. And once you know what those problems are, there is your curriculum. There are your steps. There are the possible things that you could invest in to help you solve those problems. Right, so instead of just more and more stuff, more and more stuff with no output, you're just clogging yourself up. 
Instead, make stuff first and then figure out as a result of making that stuff, what problems you have, which training, gear, software, packs could help you solve. You will notice that this business is called Make Music Your Life. And the way that I name things is very specific. It does what it says on the tin. Why make music your life? Because people are, oh, I want to make music my life. How do I do that? Oh, there's, <laughs> right? Focused on solving a problem. Turbo Track Attack. Making, actually making a playable demo of a track in under three hours. Make an album with Mike. Again, make an album in three months. Some things that are coming soon. The ultra critical arrangement trick. Make a draft in 10 minutes so that you can improve it. So we're making something which then creates problems so that we can improve it. Another one coming, the 60 minute mix blitz. Do a rough mix in under 60 minutes so that you can improve it. Again, you're doing something rough so that you can improve it. I'm always, I've always been focused on solving the problems involved when you're making music, not focusing on all of these solutions, adding, adding solutions, 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 without moving forward first. You move forward and that's when you know what to do. So it's the problem I have with a lot of particularly education. You go through a course and it tells you all of the things that you should know and be brilliant at. And of course, they probably do some kind of projects on the side where you make music, but it's like, learn Ableton. And so then what you do is you learn all of the things that Ableton can do. I don't know all of the things Ableton can do. I don't know all the things Logic can do, but I've made a heck of a lot of music. I've made music first and I learn Ableton or Logic or whatever it might be in the context of making music, because then I learn what I need to learn when I need to learn it. The curriculum is the making music. The more stuff you put in your head, I've lost count of the number of people who said, I was making loads of music and I went to a music production college and now I can't finish any. It's just so many people over the years have come to me with that problem. It's because we're stuffing solutions into our head and into our studios without the context of making music, without problems. We're focusing on solutions, not problems. So I have a system for you, which will help you during Black Friday, because it's very, very enticing when we have lots of sales. And I will do them as well. I will do sales too. But I want you to put what I'm doing through this system as well. I don't want you to buy anything from me unless you have answered these questions. I want you to promise me that, because that isn't why I'm here. I'm not here to sell you solutions in the absence of a problem. But I also want you to do this with anything else because I've used this over successive Black Fridays and I have avoided spending loads of money and making all kinds of problems for myself in my process. So first of all, right now, remove anything from the music production industrial complex that doesn't directly help you finish music. So any kind of newsletters or any YouTube channels to subscribe to or anything like that that doesn't directly help you finish music, stop paying attention to them. And until Black Friday, I mean, it's probably over the whole holiday season, to be honest, from now all the way up until into New Year, there's just sales everywhere. So for the next few months, in fact, as you finish music, make an ongoing list of what is stopping you make quality music. Well, I can't do this. I don't know that. I don't have that. Don't do anything with that. Don't go and find anything yet. Just write a list. So you have this list available to you. And something that you can do over time as you make this list is prioritize. Well, what is the most important thing I need to solve right now? Right, and put that to the top of the list. And then when it comes to, you see something you might want to buy, ask yourself this series of questions. Number one, am I buying this only for the sole reason, because it's on sale. If your answer to that question is yes, do not buy. If your answer to that question is no, move on to question two. Am I buying this solely because I want it and not because I need it? If your answer to that question is yes, do not buy. If your answer to this question is no, could this help me solve one of my music problems on the list.
right? Pre preferably one high up the list, the more important ones, because you're always going to have problems to solve. There are infinite problems to solve. So one high up the list, could this help me solve one of my music problems? If the answer to that question is no, do not buy. If your answer to that question is yes, you've got one final thing to ask yourself. What will I do in the week after buying this thing to make it a great investment? I've got a shelf of shame over there where I've got various bits of gear and various bits of kit gathering dust, right? <laughs> because I didn't go through this process. Yeah, I'm sure we've all got one. It's a shelf. Some people probably have an entire studio of shame, <laughs> right? So you ask yourself this question, what will I do in the week after buying to make this a great investment? Only when I've made a plan are you allowed to buy. Because what this little system does is it focuses you on the problems that you are solving through making music. This is how you decide what to buy. Your agenda as a creator, your curriculum as a creator, your steps as a creator come from the process of making music. So you make music first in order to figure out what you need. You don't listen to the music production industrial complex, which again, to be clear, these people aren't evil. They're not out to get you or anything like that, right? They're out to help you. But it's not their responsibility to ensure that you're not just buying things because they're on sale. It's your responsibility as a creator to stay as a creator, to create first and consume in service of that creation.